Okay, I'm here at Dreamforce 2025. I'm with Adam Evans. You are the EVP of AI and the general manager for AI at Salesforce. Tell me a little bit more about what that means. That means that everything that touches an LLM, uh, that's kind of our domain at Salesforce. That means that we're thinking about how to make our customers uh, agentic enterprises. We're building products. We're working with our teams to ultimately deploy AI in a way that creates value across every one of our customers. So what are your favorite use cases? If you could pick your top three, you know, if you look across your customers. Well, actually, so, I mean, we actually think about three categorical use cases. Um, I think, and it, it really, it's about serving your customers. It's about helping create productivity with your employees. Yeah. And then it's really this kind of new third one here. It's about kind of the workflows, agentic workflows, and kind of operations mm -hmm. as well. And those could be, for example, non-conversational. could be everything from reviewing documents to uh, looking at uh, customer conversations, building yeah. up better profiles, being more proactive. Um, so those are the kind of three things that we think about a lot. Picking a favorite one. I don't know, it's like choosing your favorite child. I would say that uh, most of the things that we saw in the last year after we debuted Agent Force, customer service was kind of where we saw a lot of interest in that, and now it's expanded also from customer service externally into things like in sales and growth, which is incredibly exciting. Yeah. Um, but the, uh, the employee side of the house with Slack and having agents be able to really know employees and create just a complete unlock on product productivity, yeah. uh, we see that, and now we're just starting to move more into that kind of background, operational, uh, those agentic workflows uh, is what we're starting to see um, come online right now. So paint me a picture of what this agentic enterprise might look like five years from now. A company that really embraces agentic AI and becomes this agentic enterprise. How will this look different to companies that we are seeing today? Well, I, I think there's a few different things playing out. Let me tell you about a customer um, that I, I uh, have a lot of respect for, actually, uh, based in Europe, called Engine. They're a relatively small but fast-growing company. They were kind of being born into this kind of agentic enterprise, meaning they are, they're not changing themselves. They're growing in this yeah. moment. They are a, uh, they help with travel. So they have a million travelers with agent force, help building accommodations across Europe. That's a great company. So I think of that as one story there, but I also think about large companies in the middle of kind of transition to things. And I will say, what is an agentic enterprise at a large scale? Uh, we were just, in fact, uh, talking to another customer that is all about doing more proactive work now. Mm -hmm. So before having customer meetings, how can we actually look at this, this company does stuff with financial services? How do they actually contact customers ahead of time to then figure out what matters most to them before they're going to sit down with a client advisor? How do they take that information and bring it back to the client advisor to be able to have also do research and things that it's prepping them so by the time they actually sit down with that client, which is this limited time, it's kind of a high profile financial advisor level, it has the most context on both parties. The customer and also the financial advisor going into that have the most productivity possible. I think you're gonna see things like this, proactive moments, better context, uh, higher use of value for uh, just everyone that works at a company. All these things are gonna start being unlocked at scale and you're gonna see this kind of new breed of companies that have a little bit more fortunate they're being born right now, mm. have kind of the opportunity to transform themselves as they grow. So the large language market, the agentic AI market is getting very crowded. Mm -hmm. I think we now have open AI with their own agents. We've got ServiceNow, we've got SAP. Yep. How do you see yourself in that ecosystem? It's a great question. Um, look, we're probably all familiar with this stat from this MIT study that 95% of all pilots never make it to production. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that, I mean, there's a lot in that stat. If you look at the last year, just tons of experimentation. Everyone's moving into this blindly. There's, we know we need to do something. Yeah. There's this demand to transform, but we don't know how. Mm -hmm. Did a lot of experiments. It's natural when you do experiments that not every one of them kind of hits, right? Mm -hmm. And so that's part of that stat, but it's not the full story. In order to create an agent that really works, that you can scale up for a use case that creates a lot of value, Right, and this may be a customer facing use case. You need to be able to build an agent that has a whole platform of tooling around it mm -hmm. to do that well, including the ability to control the agent's reasoning, 
as it thinks through things that you can trust, testing tools to make sure and to prove that that's the case. You need to be able to connect it with all of the channels that your customers are already touching your brand, whether that's your website or whether that's your contact center, your phone line now with Agent Force Voice. You need to also have that but we I think of this as the building tools to create that agent you need to bring along everyone from your business stakeholders your subject matter experts your line of business champions that know what they want the agent to do mm -hmm. to maybe if it's integrating with systems kind of the developers and some of the low code tools everybody needs to come together to launch that agent mm -hmm. so you need a series of tools that feel low code and bring everybody together and then after the agent is launched it's a huge milestone, but it's also just a milestone on the journey. You need ways to observe it. How's it performing? How do you improve it? And ultimately having recommendations to make changes. And by the way, the scale of data and like the nuances that these agents are kind of throwing off as a byproduct is, um, is very large. Mm -hmm. And there's so much to learn, which is kind of getting into that kind of that background scaled workflows with agents is another thing. How do we analyze what the agents are doing with other agents to create recommendations. So there's so much tooling that you need to do this really well. I like to think of a lot of the kind of companies out there or the pilots and experiments are basically a prompt and a loop and you call it an agent. It's, it's not really the truth. It's very easy to create a prototype these days. Like beware, beware it's easy to create a demo. It's easy to create a pilot or a prototype. Moving into production at scale requires a lot more of the strategy so tools. So the competitive advantage that you're seeing is scalability. Scalability, also having all those channels, whether it's service cloud or whether it's marketing cloud that you actually touch your customer, having the analytics tools, like for example, Tableau mm -hmm. and uh, Next built into the product, mm -hmm. having all the memory capacity that you need with unstructured data, for example, Data360, mm -hmm. having all of those things. Mm -hmm. That's what's required to actually build, ship, and improve great agents that drive value, mm -hmm. uh, not just create a demo. So I can see a future where you have so many competing agents within a company. Mm -hmm. And also, in today's keynote, mm -hmm. we're talking about vibe coding, mm -hmm. so people are able to develop their own agents easier than ever before. How do you control that ecosystem? So what advice would you give companies that are now seeing all of these different agents from all of these different companies being developed in their own organization. How do you keep control of that? Yeah, so um, a couple things. One, you, you want connectivity to these things. You want, and this is where the MCP comes in, also A to A, this is the agent to agent protocol that's also um, getting traction right now. You want to be able to connect all these investments mm -hmm. easily. And so like Agent Force allows that. You want to also be able to look at what is happening in between all of these agents, whether they're built on Agent Force or built elsewhere. Um, we have a product called Agent Force Fabric that allows you to look at all of the kind of network traffic and tool usage and understanding and have guardrails and policies about what is actually happening and you're now kind of your multi-agent network as you connected these things. Yeah. So you can understand kind of the bigger picture. Um, you, you know, with things like uh, Agent Force Vibes, which was demoed, this is the uh, ability to basically uh, build apps and build agents uh, mm -hmm. very quickly with natural language. Mm -hmm. um, you want to also not just build them quick, but you're going to need things like our testing center mm -hmm. to also build tests really quick to make sure those agents are doing the things that you want. Yeah. And you're going to need the control mechanism so it's not just purely prompts. Mm -hmm. This is where we launched Agent Script, which is now hybrid between deterministic logic and prompt logic all pulled together. Mm -hmm. These are all the toolings that you need to kind of launch agents, connect agents, uh, monitor agents, be able to create those kind of like policies to understand what's going on. And mm -hmm. um, creating agents quickly. Fantastic. Last year we launched 10,000 agents at Dreamforce. It, you know, it's easy to create demos really quickly, but to ultimately find the things and the use cases that matter the most, make sure that they're really well performing and ultimately scale to value and kind of have the telemetry on what's going on. That's really where we're kind of now in kind of year two of this with customers, where it kind of goes back to that stat, maybe the 5% of the actual pilots that made it production probably the 5% that drive the most value. Mm -hmm. And to finish off then, what would be your top tips for an organization that really embraces and becomes this agentic enterprise? What are the key building blocks to have in place to thrive in this new agentic world? Um, well, I mean, there's the, um, 
kind of the cliche advice, which is go try it out, get your hands on, get your data and all those things. By the way, those are all true, yeah. but they're, they're not as actionable. One of the things I would say is, uh, we talk to a lot of customers that come in and they say, I've got 100 use cases. And it's true, there are so many options, so many opportunities to apply this technology, but really what you want to do is say, what are the use cases that matter most? What are the things that are going to be strategic to your business to help serve your customers, to make your employees more productive, that drive the most value? And how do you want to focus on those? And then when you're going up front and you're, you're choosing those, you're creating that focus, also design into the agent the way you're going to measure the performance. Mm -hmm. And uh, right up front of like, mm -hmm. what is this going to do? How are we going to know is it doing it well? I completely right? agree. And that is, I think, um, we're moving from this moment of experimentation and learning to now this moment of actually doing that kind of focused production scale and realizing value. Mm -hmm. That is, I think, kind of this critical moment right now uh, for everyone to be thinking that way. Very good. Super interesting. Very good and practical advice. Thank you. And super exciting to see all of this innovation happening here. Great. Thank you. Thank you.